The 1990s were an important time for gaming and inspired many of the genre's gameplay mechanics and controls that are now seen as commonplace in the world of video games. Well, which ones were most influential? Today myself and for the first time YouTuber Tesla Chad will be running down the 10 most influential games of the 90s. Before we start, it's important to note that minus the final entry, these games are not placed in any real strict particular order. With that said, I'll pass you over to Tesla Chad and we'll begin. Super Metroid pioneered its own genre, of course with Castlevania Symphony of the Night on the PlayStation 1, but hey, that's not what I'm here to talk about. The word Metroidvania is thrown around a lot, especially nowadays with the indie scene, but what made Super Metroid so influential? In this game, you need to travel back and forth through the map to obtain some of your gear that you've lost. That's the only way to progress. You're gated off from whole areas until you find what you need to continue. Not only does this influence gaming as a whole, but how Super Metroid took advantage of its hardware, graphics, and gameplay-wise. Since Super Metroid released in 1994, it has affected gaming forever. For the second entry, we have easily the most well-known title in the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy VII. This entry wasn't just the first game in the long-running series to move into 3D, but also the first to release on a PlayStation platform instead of a Nintendo one, after choosing the CD-ROM as a better game format. It was this decision to release the game on the PS1 that was largely responsible for Sony's market dominance during that time, not to mention took the niche JRPG genre and pushed it to the masses. Final Fantasy VII is a game that is easily remembered by any gamer of the 90s, and for good reason, providing engrossing gameplay, characters and story that captivated an entire generation. Now we just have to hope the remake holds up even half as well, whenever it finally releases that is. There was never a fighting video game before Street Fighter 2. That's not true. But you believe me, right? It's truly hard to think of a fighting game before Street Fighter 2. The fighting game genre was popular, but not nearly as much as it was until this game released. It's so good that it was re-released several, several, uh, se several times. Even though it's been ported a lot, doesn't make any re-release bad. Street Fighter 2 was influential in its pick up and play controls. It, of course, had depth, but it was so hard to break into if you weren't already a fan of fighting games in general. By no means was it a mechanically casual game, but it did open up the genre to new people. It has characters that are still iconic to this day. Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, and more are still some of the most recognized game characters of all time. Its large and colorful cast of fighters helped, of course. No matter the type of fighting game released nowadays, it is undeniable that Street Fighter 2 influenced it. Doom is one of the most prominent games of the 90s, often considered by many as one of the grandfathers of the FPS genre as a whole, or at the very least the most important, showing the huge potential that it had. It may be able to run on virtually every device on the planet with a screen nowadays, from calculators to even fridges, but at the time it pushed hardware to its absolute limits. Its gameplay was extremely fast paced, unapologetically gory, and utterly mesmerising. Without the game, there simply wouldn't have been any of the many World War II shooters we got following on from that point, and even coined the phrase deathmatch that is now common in most FPS games. Doom was nothing short of revolutionary, making the genre what it is today. Technically, Alone in the Dark started the survival horror genre, but Resident Evil blew the dang thing up. In Resident Evil, you get the option of choosing two separate characters with two different storylines. Nothing too drastic, though. You can choose to play as Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine, both of which are on a special ops team named Stars. Their helicopter crashed in the middle of nowhere, and now all of the members of Stars are being chased into a mansion by killer dogs. They find these undead zombie creatures littered throughout the mansion. There, of course, were zombies in games before, but nothing like this. Zombies in this game are here to invoke fear and tension true horror, and upon its release, it was unlike anything anyone has ever played before. It used what is now referred to as tank controls. RE1 also gave you very little to defend yourself against these terrifying monsters. It really brings the survival in survival horror. You need to conserve your ammo and health as much as possible. Sometimes you'll need to completely avoid enemies in areas altogether because you can't afford to waste the ammunition. Ever since Resident Evil released on the PS1, it defined horror games and is one of the most influential games of the 90s. Rare's video game adaption of the James Bond movie GoldenEye 007 took what made Doom so great and expanded upon it, but most importantly showed that the first person shooter genre was perfectly viable on home consoles, a genre that was previously considered to only really work on a PC with a mouse and keyboard. 
GoldenEye may not hold up all that well by today's standards, but was extremely graphically impressive for its time and provided an incredible split-screen multiplayer experience that was really only rivalled by the likes of Mario Kart. Much like Doom, there's no doubt that GoldenEye paved the way for the big juggernaut FPS series of today, such as Halo, Call of Duty or Battlefield, and remains a defining moment of the 90s in the video game world. Super Mario World is more about iteration than innovation. The number of power-ups and range of actions may seem limited at first, but the level of nuance afforded to the player's moveset is staggering. Similarly, there are only 72 levels, but many of them contain multiple exits or are off the beaten path. Yoshi also debuts here and can accompany Mario into almost every level, essentially doubling the amount of actions available. The addition of a battery backup allowed for saving your progress for the first time in a Mario title, and the landscape itself changed and opened up as you played. For the first time, your performance in each level mattered, and not just for some arcade leaderboard. Dinosaur Land was not a mad dash towards the finish line, but a sprawling world, begging to be thoroughly explored. It may not have been the first non-linear game, but it's still one of the best. To say that Pokemon was influential is an understatement. It was a cultural phenomenon, from the game to the anime and even its collectible card game. It was a system seller to Nintendo's first handheld console and set standards on the RPG front. Collecting all 151 Pokemon was infectious. You needed to have a friend who had a game and a link cable so you could join up and battle each other. You also needed another player to trade Pokemon with in order to obtain select Pokemon final evolutions and fully complete your Pokedex. So playing this on the go with friends anywhere was unique and unlike anything that's ever been done before. Nothing touched the polish of a handheld RPG like Pokemon and nothing still has touched it. Many have tried but all have failed to be as influential as Pokemon Red and Blue on the Game Boy. It was many people's first game and what introduced a younger audience to RPGs in general. Pokemon was revolutionary and unlike anything before it. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is not only one of the most influential games of the 90s, but one of the most influential games ever made. It took what the previous Legend of Zelda games did and perfected it to a T. Its dungeons were challenging and made you really use your head. Each boss battle made you do the same. It made you study their movements and attacks for the right moment to strike. Ocarina of Time pushed the limits of the N64 by its open world, large-scale dungeons, and unforgettable boss battles. The soundtrack is some of the most recognizable tracks in gaming and still holds the test of time. This game actually changed my life. It made me into a serious gamer. Look, I've already gotten a little too long about this amazing N64 game, but Ocarina of Time is a magical game that in my opinion is perfect in every way. It not only changed my life, but many lives of gamers all around the globe. We can thank The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for influencing not only video games, but influencing people. Finally, that brings us to the last entry and the most influential game of the 90s, none other than the iconic Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 released right in the middle of the 90s in 1996, and was the first time Nintendo had attempted to propel Mario into the new exciting world of 3D gaming, a transition that felt surprisingly natural for the series. So what made the now well-regarded classic so special? For starters, it was the first game to introduce the free camera, giving the player the ability to control it as they please, a mechanic that's now standard in so many other games since then. What Super Mario 64 most notably did well, however, was absolutely nail the 3D platformer that no other of its time could even come relatively close to accomplishing, with the likes of similar games such as Bubsy 3D falling flat on its face. The game has undeniably shaped the gaming industry, its worlds were extremely varied, its controls tight and responsive, and even 22 years later, still holds up incredibly well today. A feat that I think speaks volumes. Do you agree with this list? Do you think we missed any? Let us know down in the comments. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you want to see more Tesla Chad, click the icon on the right of the screen to head to his channel, or the thumbnail to watch his latest video. Thanks for watching as usual, and I'll see you on the next video.